So we're starting section 14, chapter 14, section 3. And this is right. Little quieter, please. Right triangle. Okay, uh, right triangle uh, solving, basically. Right triangle solving, right triangle um, trigonometry is the word I was looking for. Trigonometry. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to put is the reminder. Trigonometry. Sorry, the spelling always gets me. I'm not even sure that's spelled right. Trigonometry. Um, the first thing I want to remind you of is something that you probably all have in your head somewhere is Sokatoa. Sokatoa. Um, that's if you're in the Northwest. Um, wow. If you're in the Northwest, you actually pronounce it Sokatoa, just to kind of go with the flow. Tacoma, Pew Alba. So the middle emphasis of so Sokatoa. It's true. It's true. Some of you probably have learned this cool trick. Some of you have actually learned this cool trick. You put the equals to the slash in. I think Dan does that and a couple of other teachers have done that. Um, that's a nice little reminder to remember a reminder that you do have a fraction on the right hand side and the left hand side is sine or cosine or tangent of an angle. Please remember it's of an angle. I like to use theta, it's a Greek letter. A lot of folks use Greek letters for angles. So sine of some angle, some angle like 20 degrees or 30 degrees or something like that, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Very similar, cosine theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle, I always got to emphasize, of an angle is the ratio opposite over adjacent. The first thing that uh, we want you to understand or to remember with this is uh, what I see as the common mistakes. Okay? If we have a right triangle, remember the subcatoa is for right triangle only. I like to emphasize this. Right triangle only. Okay, right triangle only does this stuff work for. So if I have a right triangle, I try to emphasize to the students to put theta in one of the two acute angles. Okay, and from there, identify what is opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Now, from theta right there, I like to emphasize that technically that has two adjacent sides. What's the hypotenuse? Okay, exactly. And I just want you to be clear that just by the definition of adjacent in the English language, like, you know, a person sitting between two people, he's, they're adjacent to both people. So, theta is adjacent to two sides, but as Sally said perfectly, the hypotenuse already has a name. The hypotenuse already has the name, and by definition, hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. That's why I drew that arrow opposite the right angle there. That means then this side, if theta is here, to be adjacent. Don't forget, if I were to put theta over here, if I was to put theta over on this side, would the adjacent be where it is now? So that's some of the things that I've found that people get confused with. It's okay, which one's my adjacent? Which one's opposite? So if it's this theta, then this guy is adjacent. Okay? If it's this theta, then this one is going to make the, the side opposite. So try to be sure you've got that balance down. Wait, is it the right angle or the right angle? So it just, it, it always depends on where you are. So I tend to tell students, put a smile face where you are. But really make sure that you are going from that point. Go ahead. Okay? Now, that's your review. Here's your new. Advanced algebra, we look at actually not only those three fractions, okay, these three fractions, but we also, we also um, look at the flips. We need to know their flips. For opposite and hypotenuse, flip is hypotenuse over opposite. And so they've come up with a new vocabulary for that. Hypotenuse over opposite has its own identification. It's the flip of sine, they call it co 
secant. They call it cosecant, and they use the C, S, and C for the three letters to identify it in this type of format with the, um, the other trait functions. So it's not the opposite. Be careful. It's the flip of the fraction. The flip of the fraction. Flip height over opposite, or flip the opposite over height, and you get height over opposite. It's a new vocabulary, so the exact same way that you just memorized this one, you have a new one to memorize called cosecant. In fact, you have two more to memorize. The flip of sine is actually, excuse me, the flip of cosine, I said that wrong. The flip of cosine, okay, is called secant, is called the secant. And so they use the first three letters, secant of theta is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And again, don't forget, the adjacent is only determined when I know what theta is. And the last one is called a cotangent, a cotangent. And they use the first three letters, co, co, C-O-T, cotangent theta is equal to adjacent over um, excuse me, opposite. Adjacent over opposite. Now let's do a couple of examples and see if we can figure this one out. I'm going to draw a right triangle. I think I'll draw this right triangle, what we would say is maybe upside down with uh, what might be considered the base to be at the top up here. So if I label this guy with uh, 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 just some numbers here, I want to emphasize the general idea for labeling and geometry because the book is going to use this symbol logic. So triangle ABC with angle C equal to 90 degrees. So does everybody know where I'm going to put angle C then? Okay, so that's how the book will do it. So C will go here. Little C goes opposite big C. So little C goes there. Okay. A and B, angles A and B given from the triangle information up here, can be placed pretty much arbitrarily. You could switch them, it really doesn't matter. Because when we actually identify it, it all depends on where I'm standing. So just putting the A and B in now doesn't matter. What really matters is when I say secant of B, you got to know where you're standing. Okay? So opposite of big A, little a, opposite of big B, little b. Go for it. Why do you label Huh? Okay, because I have angles, which are degrees, 20 degrees, 50 degrees, and I have lengths that could be in inches or meters or something. That is the opposite. Okay, and the way that traditionally in geometry, we like to keep our big letters across from our little letters in geometry, if we can. Okay, let's do a quick example to stop this. What if I said what? What is secant of B, of angle B? What is secant of angle B? So this is what in mathematics we call mapping skills. Okay? Mapping skills are come, I believe come from the phrase when you use a map and you see like a dashed line and you want to know what kind of road that is, if your car can travel on it. You would go to the legend and you would look up what that means and come back and know what it means. This is what we call a mapping skill because it's the same idea. These items that I've put up here, these equations, the cosecant, the secant, the cotangent, and all of those, those, that's your legend. So this is your map. Your map says what secant B and it has this picture. So use your legend to figure out what the letters are. What is it? C over A is what she says. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to double check. Secant is hypotenuse, okay, over adjacent from B. Hypotenuse is always the same place. C, adjacent is A. C over A. Perfect. And that's all you're going to do for some of the problems is throw in two numbers in a fraction. And I'll show you some examples here in a second. So you have the flips of the original Sokotoa. Okay, functions that you learned last year. So now you have the flips of them. 